Yet again is another BYD Addo 3 Omura E5 alternate. The midsize SUV segment competition is getting real hot. But this time, it's the all new Kai X3 Pro EV. Not to be mistaken with the gasoline counterpart. It comes with a 53.6 kilowatt hour lithium ferrous phosphate battery, LFP battery, that is mated to a 120 kilowatt motor that produces a range of 401 kilometers. But realistically, just keeping it between you and I, depending on how much you're gonna feather foot it, this will give anywhere above 350 kilometers. And under the hood, the motor produces 260 newton meters, which means a zero to 100 kph time of just under 10 seconds and a top speed of 150 kilometers per hour. As for numbers on this car, since we're talking about it, the unladen ground clearance on this is 182 mm, which is good enough for just about most city roads and a bit of off road. And the boot space at the back is quite usable at 360 liters. Now what's really awesome about when you buy this car is that the company actually throws in not just a home 7 kilowatt fast charger in complement with the granny portable charger that you can take anywhere but also an entire spare wheel you don't get that in most cars these days let alone evs anyway never me blabbering let me hop onto the driver's seat and check what this car is all about it sure is comfy <laughs> <laughs> that's my first impression coming into this car you are first of all if you fix your seating position very high up from the ground and it's a very commanding sort of driving position where you can overlook the road you see the bonnet properly it's a bigger size car so you definitely have that advantage as for driving modes there are two an eco mode and a sport mode and let me tell you, this is a car where you can really feel the difference between the sport mode and the eco mode. The motor, the steering wheel sensitivity, the brake sensitivity, they all become so much more extreme and fine-tuned and sensitive. In some EV cars with a front wheel motor, there is a bit of a torque pull, which by that i mean you have to have your hand firm on the steering wheel otherwise the car depending on the car has a tendency to either pull your steering wheel a bit to the left or to the right it's just the mechanics of how some cars pull it's called torque steering brake wise it's got four disc brakes two in the front are ventilated disc brakes which is more than ample frictional braking but the advantage of this being an EV is there is regenerated braking on this car. Then coming onto the suspension, it's a McPherson strut in the front like most cars these days and a multi-link rear. I wouldn't say it's the most plush thing out there but it's also not definitely a stiff ride inside. It'll handle your uneven roads, you pick up speed, there isn't too much a body roll it'll dampen out the uneven unpitched roads and it'll handle rough road patches that are unpitched still have gravel on them pretty well so this car comes with a small key fob is your perfect mid-size family utility vehicle that has rugged touches yet looks pretty darn contemporary the car is provided in four colors white red blue and gray at the moment there is some cars that have a dual tone vision roof on top when there is the option of either a sunroof or a panoramic moonroof and let's begin with charging because right at the front is your CCS type 2 port. You have your AC port and your DC port. And you can charge this in numerous ways, starting with the slowest granny charger. It'll probably take you about 15 hours with a 3.3 kilowatt 15 amp home charger. But then you can bump it up with the fast 7 kilowatt AC charger that the company provides. 
and that will bump it down to about eight hours so basically an overnight charge from zero to a hundred and then you can also dc fast charge this and the clean time is around an hour but of course conditions applied your charging speeds will always slow after 80 percent just for preservation and you need to remember the fact that the charging guns split the total speed into two depending on how many vehicles are charging at a time the voltage the temperature of the battery and other things and as for the exteriors on this car it's got a electric looking front grille no radiator as i mentioned but there are vent cutouts at the bottom here for ac intake there is a radiator inside you have your tow hook here your number plate there a front camera here your badging kai badging at the front there this is all led treatments at the front your headlights your daylight running lights your side lights and it's got these very aerodynamic looking cuts on the side coming straight down to the tire the tire profile on this is 215 55r18s and if you want to know what those numbers mean check out my citro ec3 shine review it is 18 inch aluminium wheels with a bit of a dual tone steel and black sort of finishing underneath you have your disc brakes and coming above you have your electric foldable mirrors as well as electrically adjustable mirrors you have side lights and as i mentioned a sunroof panoramic sunroof is available in the car depending on the variant that you buy it's a very like bold stance rugged looking tall car and the c pillars on this car are pretty decently hidden in they're not too angular or they don't stick to out the rear at least personally to me feels a bit tall and boxy but again it looks like a proper utilitarian suv from the back what i found really interesting about this car is that there's actually no antenna no shark fin antenna or just regular antenna on this car i guess we're gone from those days you have a rear spoiler on top with a backlight tail bar on top and you have a bunch of chrome finishing on this car the badging this strip that cuts across and into the rear lights it's again led lights at the back too by the way and then you have your parking sensors at the bottom another camera here and at the back again a very respectable 360 liters of boot space at the back it's very wide no loading lip here there is a light there and you have like hook points here you do have a floor and an underbed which at the moment is empty but again this is where your spare wheel will go you have a parcel tray here and the back seats will fold down in that familiar 60 is to 40 ratio which will bump up the space to a thousand and one hundred liters which is more than enough for hauling in much larger items all right as for the interiors on this car it's really well put together for a chinese car it's got these like little touches like stitching that makes the car feel a little bit more posh than what it is overall it's like a very good play of textures inside you have a bit of hard plastics you have softer touch points made of leatherette material by the way a plasticky vinyl wooden sort of finishing theme going on and just a bunch of tactile buttons like for your ac for your gear knobs down here your horn just it's a whole playground of like different touch textures in here it's got a 10.25 inch center console and a 7 inch digital driver's display which i will talk about in another video so stay tuned for that if you're wondering about air quality in the cabin this car does come with a 2.5 pm air filter and coming on to the driver's seat and all its controls now we'll start with the door you have two tweeters and two speakers a grand total of six speakers in this car sound quality is pretty decent 
you have one touch for all the windows by the way both to go up and down and you have a lock unlock here and you have a pretty large size water bottle holder as well as more space for anything else on the right hand side of the driver's seat you have all the controls for your mirror for your angle adjustment of the mirror as well as for your headlight angle adjustment your steering wheel you have your horn in the middle you have your indicator stock as well as your headlights on the left hand side of the steering wheel similarly you have all your menu controls for your driver's display on the right hand side though are your wiper controls and your media controls on the steering wheel your steering wheel can be adjusted for height not for reach though and you do have electronic adjustment on the driver's seat so your your reach to the pedals and then your height of the seat whether you want a low seat or a high seat and then your reclining angle just to go front and back now moving on to the center console since i mentioned it's a good blend of touchscreen buttons and different touch points in this car it's very intuitively built out like i'm really liking the fact that there are these different tiles sort of controls for the hvac and down is to like lower the speed or lower the temperature and up is to like increase the speed fan speed or increase the temperature <laughs> just makes sense your center console has a wireless charger, a 12 volt plug, and then two USB ports, one a USB-A to connect your phone and also Bluetooth, but in case you want wired, and two a USB-C, which is pretty neat. Your AC vents here, and then your gear knob is here. You put your foot on the brake and forward for reverse. It'll activate the 360 camera and give you a good resolution of the peripherals of the car in neutral and then you have a drive at the bottom you also have your button for parking your electronic parking brake and your auto hold button a dedicated one i also really like that the volume rocker is right down here you don't have to like look into the menu you have a dedicated 360 camera button here a sport mode or an eco mode toggle button and a dedicated power on and off for the infotainment basically also your engine on and off are just right there you have not one but two cup holders here though these are smaller probably will fit a coke can or a to go coffee and then on top of the wireless charger you also have a slit for your phone in case yeah i really thought this was cool like you're gonna have a driver who has one phone and then you're gonna have a passenger who's gonna have another phone that and want to keep somewhere <laughs> and then moving on to the ceiling of this car you have a sunshade with a vanity mirror and it does extend out too that's great because this car has two options of a panoramic moonroof like you see here or a sunroof that opens up all your controls are here there's actually a dial here to turn off the interior lights or on and the buttons to open and close your moonroof. You also have a sunshade holder here and your rear view mirror is on the smaller side but it does do the job. Then coming on to the passenger seat, it's all manual adjustment here unlike in the driver's seat but there's good finishing in terms of leatherette, soft touch materials. Again, that really nice <laughs> differing play of hard plastics, vinyl, soft touch, and more hard plastic going on a decent sized glove box the one last thing at the front here is that you have a armors with a decent size storage box here all right and as for the rear seat again similar treatment of different textures at the back the seats are quite tall there is a storage compartment if you want to put in any belongings there you have these on the taller side body panels you have grab handles with a coat holder at the top here and again it's a taller size suv looking car and so you get good headroom you get good knee room you get good footwell room and what i'm really surprised about this car is even though it shares its platform with a gasoline counterpart 
the floor bed is quite relatively flat. You never think <laughs> that this shares a frame chassis with a gasoline car. You also get one AC vent at the back and a USB-A charger. And the car does come with two isofix points for like baby seats at the back. But what's missing to me at least <laughs> on this car is though there are three seat belts at the back one there is no rear headrest so in case you are rear-ended and you have like a whiplash if you're in the center seat you might want to watch out and two there isn't a rear armrest for some reason As I say, Chinese cars are good and have become good at being good really quick. In the last decade, we've seen a rise in them incorporating all the latest features, comfort, and range in the world of EVs are great. When they are sold at half the prices of their European or American or even German counterpart. What if I were to tell you that Kai is actually an abbreviation just like Build Your Dreams is for BYD? It's actually an amalgamation of various aspects of life. Kindness, active, innovative, young, and intelligent. And it's got a Taurus head for its logo, if you've noticed it. Kai was actually founded in 2014 and originally a subsidiary of the Cherry Automobile Group with some other investments. But come 2019, Cherry took over and had a massive restructuring. The company now produces sedans, SUVs, and are found in over 30 countries. And this EV's got it all. Like, what more do you want? This is a proper functional, but also well-designed EV SUV that'll meet the needs of most families and beyond. It definitely checks all the tick boxes in terms of what you would need out of a car that will do easy city commutes, but also the occasional highway commute with a range of close to 400 depending on how you drive you can definitely hit intercity travels with this and considering it does have dc fast charging capabilities <laughs> you're all set to go what i'm really liking about this car the kai is the fact that they call themselves a user-centric sort of company where they listen to the demands of the markets that they are exporting their cars to and <laughs> just checking out all the features today in the car i realized that this is one of the few cars out there in the market that really personalizes their cars according to the market that they're sending it to like i did my research heavily on the costa rican variant of this car and they actually send this car on the other hand side drive forget about that that's a very general sort of personalization but with a gbt charger because costa rica has more gbt chargers unlike us that has more ccs chargers and hey this car has a ccs charger it's got a good decent height ground clearance to fit for our south asian roads it's got driving modes that are really really in tune with what a user would want like you definitely wouldn't want to be on the ball with sports mode all the time and so economy mode eco mode on this is like really dulled down for like leisurely city driving i'm enjoying that there are these small attention to details that this company has done more than the other companies at least in my personal experience of just <laughs> testing this out and i'm liking this kai philosophy <laughs> anyway this mid-size suv segment is overcrowded you have this you have that the byd 
Ato 3, you have the Omoda, you have the Hyundai Kona, you have the MG ZS EV, and they all offer marginal differences here and there. Similar feature lists, similar price points. So which one would you pick? I feel like this is a strong contender in that list now. And drop me a comment about what your preferences are and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.